But I want to start off with top four, number four, Florida State, a two and a half point favorite on the road in Death Valley at Clemson. This game carries an over under of 55 points. It kicks off at noon Eastern on ABC. I have a feeling any other weekend, this would have been a 730 primetime kick. Some quick injury stuff. Clemson, Clemson safety, Andrew Mukaba or Mukaba. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce his last name, but he is a questionable to play along with starting offensive guard, Walter Parks. And for Florida State, safety, Akeem Dent, offensive lineman, Robert Scott, and offensive lineman, Marie Smith. They all missed last week. They may be in this week, but who knows? There's a lot of questions about that. Be looking at that because these are some big contributors. These are starters that may not play. Fans will reopen this line at Clemson plus three, but then buyback happened really quickly. It went all the way down to, I think, Florida State minus one. Uh, And an important note, if you're looking to bet the total, don't just take 55 either way. Shop around. 55 is the most common point total over the last five years in college football. So you are looking at a three and a half percent edge one way or another on 55 and a half or going over on the square 55. I think Florida State's final score with Boston College was a little bit misleading. You might look at it and say, wow, they only beat him by two, 31-29. It got a little uh, testy at the end there, but they're dealing with some weather stuff. But Florida State had pretty firm control of this game besides giving up a bunch of points late. They had a fumble picked up in return for Boston College touchdown. So some weird stuff there. Classic uh, maybe look-ahead spot for the Knowles. I think the perception, though, on Clemson has been really bad and possibly even skewed after that big-time national loss to Duke. We all saw it, and perhaps we're carrying those priors with us just a little bit too long because the Tigers turned around and drubbed Charleston Southern FAU like they should have. Now, Clemson, they are actually number two in rushing success rate, almost a 60% clip. We're talking 57.7%, but they're throwing the ball the 13th most times nationally. Why are we doing this? I don't know. Dabo, I don't know if he's got control of the offense over there. I know they handed the keys to Garrett Riley, but... There's all sorts of weird stuff going on with that offense. I think, quite frankly, it's broken. Florida State's secondary, though, when you look at their game against SMU, they or SMU, LSU, they did give up some big plays. So there is slight concern in that Florida State secondary. But nothing that Cade Klubnick's done so far this year makes me believe that he's going to be exposing that secondary. And good Lord, are the Clemson wide receivers awful. They're just so bad. They can't catch. They can't get separation. They're not explosive. It's a bad group. Florida State has already given up 15 rushes of 10 or more yards. That's 89th nationally. Like, they they give up chunk plays. So Clemson doesn't have an opportunity to be able to run it with Will Shipley if they so please. But like I said, they like to throw the ball at their five-star quarterback. I you know I, I need to know if they're going to keep it on the ground or if they're going to abandon it early if Florida State gets on them and shuts down a couple of runs. If Florida State shuts down the running game, good night, Clemson. What do your numbers make of this gigantic ACC matchup? Yeah, Brett, it's the game of the year in the ACC. I don't care how we've gotten here. It's the one we've had circled all summer. I thought there'd be a good chance that one of these teams would have a loss coming in, but Brett, I didn't think it'd be Clemson. Uh, It was surprising to open the season. Now they've they've got to save their season. Coming into this year, my numbers assigned a 62% chance for Clemson to make the ACC championship game. They were my favorite in the conference, a 56% chance for Florida State. They were number two. Now, The Seminoles are up to a 68% chance, and the Tigers are down to a 10% chance, Brett. With a win in this game, Florida State's chances to make the ACC championship game all the way up to 82%. With a loss, it's still a 50-50 proposition. Uh, They have a bit of an easier remaining uh, conference slate than than, than Clemson and some other contenders. Clemson, like I said, they're at 10% right now. With a win, it's up to 22%. So still not going to be an overwhelming favorite to make it even with the head-to-head over Florida State. Again, because Clemson's been downgraded in the power ratings and they have a more difficult conference slate uh, upcoming with a loss, Brett. 3% chance that Clemson makes the ACC championship game. Essentially, they're out of this. I mean, they'd be 0-2 after two games. We haven't even gotten to October yet. It's just crazy. My numbers have Florida State minus three. It's a 59% win expectancy for the Seminoles. Brett, there's only a 32% chance that the average top 25 team would be 3-0 against Florida State's schedule right now. That's the second best in the country behind only Texas. The Seminoles are outscoring their opponents by 12.1 points per game more than would be expected of the average top 25 team against the Knowles schedule. When you combine those two achievements, Florida State is number two in my most deserving rankings right now behind only Texas. This is a team that has a very good resume to this point. Again, carried largely by the the neutral site win against LSU to open the year, but that was a big win. They deserve credit for it, and they're getting it in my most deserving rankings. From a power rating standpoint, which is how we should be looking forward and trying to judge this game, Florida State's power rated number seven. 
They have the number nine offense in the country, the number 21 defense. The only negative that I can really talk about with the Seminoles right now is their most recent form. They're coming off by far their worst performance of the year. And you said it. It could have been a look ahead spot. That's for sure. But either way, it wasn't great. 31-29 win at Boston College. The Knolls are down 4.7 points from a week ago. Only Oklahoma State was downgraded more for me this past week. For Clemson, there have been more negatives than positives this season. There's no doubt about that. They entered the year number seven in the power ratings with the number 18 offense. Uh, the Tigers lost to Duke by 21 before picking up wins at home against FCS Charleston Southern and then a weak FAU team. The offense has been downgraded to number 30. The defense has rebounded, though, after a poor start. They're now back up into the top 10. Overall, I have Clemson number 15. This game should be strength on strength. Top 10 Florida State offense, top 10 Clemson defense. I do like the Seminoles' defense more than the Tigers' offense. This game's in Death Valley, though, and I do expect that'll make a difference. However, maybe not as much of a difference at noon as it would have been if it was later in the day. And Brett, you said if this game's any other week, maybe it is a primetime game. Well, Clemson fans and that Clemson team sure wishes it was, I'm sure, because Death Valley at noon is not Death Valley at 8 p.m. So I have Florida State in this one. I have a minus three. It's a 41% chance that Clemson pulls off the upset uh, victory at home. If they fall to 0-2 in conference play, I, I, I talked about it earlier, it's a knockout blow. I mean, the Tigers' season, their goals, essentially over, and we haven't even hit October, Brett. You would have told me this uh, coming in just even a month ago. I probably would have laughed at you and be like, there's no way. And here we are. My goodness, it could be bad for Clemson if they do not get the win in this game. Yeah, part of being a successful college football analyst, handicapper, or whatever you want to call it, is being able to admit when you're wrong. And uh, I've done that. You've done that on this show about Colorado. Uh, hand up. K. Klubnik, not very good so far. Clemson's offense Agreed. did not rebound like I expected it to whatsoever. Uh, yeah, I, I have a futures bet on Clemson to win the national championship. And boy, that's that's out the window. May as well have just donated at this point. But you talked about the strength versus strength, and I want to narrow it down just a little bit further besides just Florida State's offense versus Clemson's defense, specifically Florida State's offensive line against Clemson's defensive line. Missing those two starters, though, for Florida State, that's a, that's an issue. Uh, we do need them back because Clemson's defensive line is stout as they've ever been, and that could spell disaster for Jordan Travis um, should he be facing just a hailstorm of pressure from the Clemson front. But to touch on the stadium, because I love stadiums, I'm a geek, I travel to them all, uh, Clemson Memorial Stadium, no joke. Like you said, uh, it's it's going to be a tough, tough home environment here. Phil Steele gives Clemson their a home edge of five and a quarter points. That's in line with LSU and Texas a uh, I have been to the latter two, but I have not been to Clemson's Memorial Stadium for a game. I visited it empty in the summer. Um so I can't speak to the noise level in terms of comparison, but from what I've heard, it's not quite the LSU A&M level of loud. Um, I've been to those. It's it's insanity. Uh, it is crazy loud there. Uh, both of these teams have been tested to a degree, but Florida State's win over LSU is a lot more proving, I think, than Clemson's blowout loss to Duke, even though um, if, uh, if, if you, you, you did downgrade them quite a bit in terms of their conference championship futures because it was a conference game there. Uh, you know, I would like to know how that Duke game would have shaken out if Clemson didn't just turn the ball over every five plays, uh, or if they would have even scored an average rate in the red zone. It, it was, it was mm -hmm. a freak game, but you go back and you look at the orange bowl and you know what? Clemson did the same darn thing against Tennessee then. So this may just be who they are. This may just be with the term Clemsoning that got resurrected on that fateful Monday night. <laughs> Uh, it's clear that Clemson's an issue. I don't think it's an outlier performance. I cannot bet on that here. Um, Kelly, we, the real Death Valley. I'm going to get screamed at for this, um, but LSU took that took that right in the 2019 National Championship game. It's been LSU for me a lot longer than 2019. LSU is the real Death Valley, in my opinion. I didn't know if we wanted to get into that. I know it makes people upset. Hey, I like both <laughs> these Tigers. I like these teams. I like these programs. They've had great success in the last decade. But if someone says Death Valley... I think LSU. I'm being honest. That's the what I think first. Now, I'm not from South Carolina. I'm sure those folks think of it differently. If someone says USC, I think Southern Cal. I don't think South Carolina. I know people down in that part of the country, again, yeah. they, say, they say South Carolina. To me, the real Death Valley is LSU. However, this is a Death Valley, too. Just doesn't have the same bite during the day as it does at night.